I last came to this, this event uh, four years ago, um, and we came as Octo because our insurance clients, um, who are risk businesses, um, were asking us an important question. What was the connected car going to do to their business? Was it a risk or was it, was it an opportunity? So we came along to, to find out what was happening in the, in the automotive space, and what we found was lots of great ideas looking, looking for markets, and frankly, we still see lots of great ideas looking for markets. What, what I want to talk about this morning is, is how we have applied you know, our, our knowledge and know-how that we've gained through our insurance telematics to the broader, the broader market, and how we're, you know, we're delivering benefits for the OEMs we work with, the wider automotive players we work with and, uh, and our insurance partners, and of course, not forgetting the end, uh, the end consumer. So I'm going to talk about what we do um, and you know, try and contextualize that for you in the, you know, kind of in the automotive space. I'm going to talk about what, what I see as a very big and, and interesting market opportunity. And you know, I don't want people in, in, in this room and in the automotive and insurance space to leave potential money on the table because there are great opportunities to, to profit from connected car and, and telematics, both in terms of financial dollars, but also in terms of improving customer satisfaction. So we're going to talk about that value we create for the partners and what that actually, what that actually looks like, the problem that we solve, and what the, the partners playing in the ecosystem actually, actually get. We're going to talk about OEM partnerships, how we think about that, how we look at it, how we make it, how we make it work. I'm going to update on, on what we've been doing for the last, uh, last 12 months since we, we spoke last time in terms of a specific case study. Um, and then I'm going to talk about um, our, our latest offering, which is insurance for, um, for fleet in the, in the US market. So what we do, um, very simply, we're, we're transforming auto insurance through behavioral, contextual, and driving analytics. You know, this isn't just about big data. It's not just collecting loads of driven miles. This is about collecting data about you know, how people drive, where they drive, when they drive, in context, to allow insurers to make very, very important and fundamental decisions to their, to their businesses. So this is a very sophisticated um, activity. So how we do it is, it starts with the data collection, collecting in, uh, data that is insurance grade that starts to think about you know, the data in the context in which it's collected, the location, cornering, braking, the driving type, um, type inputs. Importantly, collision, and I'll come on and talk about the importance of, of crash data and how that informs the claims process. And then putting that together in a variety of different ways. So all of these different inputs can be formed into multiple different, in fact, up to 2,000 different, different parameters depending on the use case, depending on the type of segment, depending on the value proposition that the insurer is, is, is thinking about. We then apply very advanced analytics to process that data and an output to the insurer, a set of services that allows them to do their fundamentals um, better. So you know, it's not about dumping raw data in, in, in a, on an actuary's lap to get them to try and figure out how to price a risk or manage and pay a claim. It's providing precision services to allow insurers to do what they, um, what they do. And think about this. Insurance is a very, uh, very simple business. We, we've recently moved offices in, in London, our, our global headquarters. And opposite our office, there is, a, there is a blue plaque, which you see a lot of around London. It commemorates the former homes and places of business of, of people from, from the you know, past, everybody from you know, Shakespeare to Winston Churchill. Um, and this, this supermarket, as is now, has a blue plaque, and it commemorates the site of the old Lloyd's Coffee Shop, which is the historical home of, of insurance, 1695 to 1723. And that was where the merchants of the day would sit, and they'd bet on ships, routes, and captains, on, on goods and materials coming back from the then, the then new world. And really, I hope there aren't too many insurers in the room, things haven't moved on that much. It's still important to know the type of vehicle, the driver, you know, age as an example, and the route that they're taking. Is it a risky route? Is it a, is it a, is it a safer route? So what we're doing, in essence, is, is using our capabilities of collecting data and processing that data to just help our insurance clients make better decisions, make more accurate business decisions, 
and provide better quality of services to their, um, to their customers and improve their, improve their bottom line. So after the history lesson, the market opportunity. Um, we see a very big and exciting uh, market for, for insurance telematics, $35 billion. And that's before you start to think about the adjacencies in, um, in fleet, E-Call, B-Call type service and diagnostics. And we're very focused as a business in seizing as much of that $35 billion as we, as we can. And this is a market that, you know, I, I kind of think of um, automotive and, and cars and insurance as night follows day. If you have a car, you need to insure it because guess what, it, it, it's the law. So can we find better, better ways of, of doing that to benefit all the players in the, in the ecosystem? The market's growing really fast, and, and yeah, this is what's happening now. And to put this in, in context for you, they're, they're, at the end of 2015, according to uh, Potomolus Consulting Group, there are 12 million insurance telematics globally. In the US, there were 6 million. But the important thing, and I think the interesting thing to, to think about, is in 2020, there are going to be 93 million. That's nearly 100 million insurance, telematics policies globally. And nearly 50 million of those are going to be in the US. So this is a train that, that's, that's, that's leaving the station. It's a market that's growing, and you know, I don't use the word transformational or revolutionizing the insurance industry, industry lightly. But this is how our insurance customers um, think about it, and this is why it's important. This is why it's a big, uh, a big business opportunity not to be, not to be missed, particularly in, in the US. So the value that we create for our, for our partners and their customers, um, it's win-win. And this is you know, it's kind of a perfect, perfect business model. Yeah, insurers can improve their financial results because they can do their job better. They can price risk more accurately. They can pay the right amount of claims. They understand liability, both in terms of quantum of claim and who is at, who is at fault. Significantly enhanced interactions with their customer. It's not a once a year arm wrestle thing. It's an ongoing dialogue about driving behavior, how it can improve, how it can be, and um, how it can be rewarded. Drivers get a discount. You know, we're all conditioned to buy insurance on price. It's the, the arm wrestle that we have with the agent or the, uh, the online service that we, that we may use one, once a year. So there's a very compelling um, proposition here where you can pay your bill. You know, pay the bill that is, relates to you and the driving that, that, that you do. That might not be for everybody, but for a lot of us, being able to pay for what we consume is a very powerful motivating force. And then to receive the service in the moment that we, that we need it is very important. If I do have a crash, or even if it's a fender bender for my insurer to call me and say, hey, look, we've noticed something's happened from the you know, sensor on the, on the vehicle. Do you need any help? Can we send a, can we send a tow truck? In the most serious of instances, to be able to send um, emergency services. And this is a very powerful argument for what's starting to happen in the US now. And indeed, we've just updated all of our firmware on the, on the devices we have on the market in the US to be able to provide that, that crash and claims data to the insurer to be able to deliver those um, mission critical type, um, type services. And we have a sustainable business, frankly. You know, it's good for our, for our insurance customers, it's good for their consumers, it's good for us. We can continue to invest in the, in the technology and in the, and in the services. And this is the real kind of point about um, the crashing claims perspective. And, and I think this is important for all players in the, in the in the ecosystem, be they automotive players, be they automotive dealers, um, be they insurers, is that you know, around about 80% of an insurer's total costs are in claims. And wouldn't it be good as, a, as, a, as an OEM or as an automotive dealer to be able to get people back into your body shop or repair facility and to be able to provide services that are, that are um, better for that consumer and help the, help the business? So being able to leverage on the benefits of the built-in technology or the aftermarket technology that connect a vehicle to deliver better services at the point of need is very important. Then there are the benefits of accident reporting, reducing fraud, playing the right amount of claims, and being faster and more accurate in the delivery of services for um, emergency and, and, and breakdown. So that's kind of one of our key um, thesis, if you like, that you know, for full telematics to work, it needs to be about 
pricing the risk accurately, and being able to manage and pay the claims with great accuracy as well. So OEM partnerships. Um, we strongly believe that TSBs, to be credible now, have to be OEM and connected car, connected car ready. And providing a you know, one-stop shop to get that, get that connect connectivity really happening. And we see sort of kind of three, three options. Um, a data play, a full integration, and then this very exciting opportunity in the, in the autonomous car, where contextual driving analytics is absolutely vital to knowing how that car is performing and where it is on the road and, and the mode that, it, that, it's, that it's currently, currently in. And this is really where, we, where we're, we're helping our OEM partners to, to monetize the data that is resulting as a, as a, as a consequence of connected, connected car programs. It can be value-added services. It can be used for internal purposes to build better cars. Knowing how consumers are using their cars and in what context is, is great insights for, for, for OEMs. And of course, external models to build additional, um, additional products, and, products and services. And in practice, our, our commercial or our business model, it works in two different ways. We, we can purchase the data. You know, the data is, is important, and we work with you know, the OEM partners that, you know, to make sure that it's data that meets the needs of an insurance partner, that it is the type of data that I described earlier, it's accurate, and it's contextual, and you can make those important decisions on. Or we can invest in hardware, so it becomes a, you know, an inline um, an in scenario. But all of that data can then be processed through a consistent, um, a consistent platform to deliver the insurance propositions, to deliver broader um, telematics value-added services, um, and, and to create you know, a scenario that everybody can benefit from what's being, um, what's being created as a consequence of the, of the connectivity. And this is kind of what it looks like at the, at the conceptual level. And we presented this chart um, last year. And, and we, we said, look, you know, this is the Octo Hub that we're creating. It's a way of monetizing uh, connected car data on, on a many-to-many -many basis. So you know, working with multiple um, OEMs who are collecting data um, and then being able to connect that with the 90 or so business partners in the insurance and rental and fleet basis that Octo's already um, already connected with. You know, it's not the job of, of OEMs and insurers to kind of connect with each other. It's too complicated. There's so many other things going on. TSPs, Octo, we, we have already done that. We have already done that work. So we can connect the OEM customers, the end consumers of those OEMs, with the right insurance to meet the need of that particular segment. And yeah, if you're an OEM and you're selling everything from you know, the German manufacturer with one series to eight series, and all sorts of different people buying those vehicles, it's important to have that range of insurance providers who have, have appetite for different, different risk segments. And this is what we're seeing starting to, starting to build, um, build in the market right now. So case studies and partnerships in action. And, and you know, those of you who may have, have heard me um, speak before, I, I kind of have this, this thing about um, you know, what, what's really happening. So what, what have we actually done as opposed to what we have on PowerPoint and we're actually you know, planning or trying to do. Well, this is, um, this is what we told you last year. This was the, this was the slide, um, Detroit Automotive um, 2015. I sat out there in the coffee bar, actually, um, arguing with my uh, general counsel about what we, could, what we could say at that time because we hadn't quite finalized the contract. Well, we have now, and we've been, um, we've been working on it. And this is what we've done with, um, with, with GM. You know, we're working with GM now across 13 European markets and all of their, um, all of their vehicle types. And we're providing the in insurance telematics capabilities um, to the long-term um, fleet management businesses as well as to the end consumers of the Opel and, Opel and Vox Vauxhall vehicles. And it's providing that end consumer with the option to purchase an insurance telematics policy um, that is based on you know, how they drive on a paper trip basis, or on a whole range of yet to be invented value propositions that the insurers now have the capability to be able to provide based on the data and the data richness that they're, um, that they're, now, saying, that they're now seeing. And in advance, we pay, we pay a fee to GM. So GM are monetizing the data. They're providing a, an enhanced and value-added service to their insurer, that they're insured, their customer, on a simpler, easier, and, and cheaper, cheaper basis. And of course, that forms a proxy for loyalty 
and there's a flow of data back to, um, to the OEM or to put back to, to Vauxhall Lopal so they understand more about how customers are using their car. So this is happening. We're really excited about it. We're working on the, um, the marketing and the go-to-market through the dealerships with the, um, with the OEM team um, right now. And it's forming the basis for all of the other discussions and dialogue that we're having with, with multiple other OEMs. So this time next year, we'll have a number of case studies to, um, to share with you. In addition, we're working with um, Octo and, and Java um, to take full advantage of the, of the JVM environment. And this is an investment that we're, that we're making as Octo, as the 36% as the market share and market leader. We think this is the right thing to do, to start to leverage the, um, the JVM environment for data that we can then provide, um, provide services for. You know, we think this is a really, really good thing to, to, to do, to, to leverage on something that is already, already there, something that is already implemented, and we can then apply our, you know, our analytics and our core solutions for the benefit of the OEM players monetizing and the, the benefit of their, um, their end consumers. So this is in a, an, an early stage development, but we think this is gonna go fast and we think it's gonna go, it's gonna go very quick, but it, it's kind of for the benefit of the, um, for the industry. And last but not least, um, today we're launching insurance telematics solutions for fleet in, uh, in North America. Um, and back to what I was saying earlier, actually, the, the way that we thought about this is, is not just something that we can do because we've got the tools and the building blocks in our, um, in our, uh, in our garage, as it were, but you know, what's the problem that we're trying to, trying to solve here? You know, the total cost of ownership is the, you know, kind of the key KPI that the fleet manager is looking at. What, what can we do to help them reduce that total cost of ownership? We understand where, where the costs are in, in, in managing a fleet. Funding and depreciation clearly making up the, you know, the biggest cost. But fuel, maintenance and repair, and insurance are also other very significant um, costs that the, you know, the fleet manager has to, has to think about. So we can uniquely combine all of the things that we know about insurance telematics, particularly around how do we quickly process a vehicle, we know it's crashed, we process it efficiently and get it back on the road with the, the lowest possible cost, with the standard set of, of fleet services. And what that looks like is um, two, two offers, two distinct offers, Octo Fleet Light for the you know, light to medium duty vehicles leveraging on the OBD, OBD2 port, and then Octo Fleet Professional, which is professionally um, installed devices where an OBD2 port can't be, can't be supported. Because you know, at Octo, we think of you know, the end-to-end -end device, end -end device portfolio, everything from a smartphone right through to a connected vehicle and everything in, in between. Different, different sets of data to provide different services, but nevertheless a solution for, for every, um, every type of vehicle. So we see our, our new service as, as, as UBI, the user-based insurance set of services, plus fleet, fleet uh, services delivering a lower total cost of ownership um, for the fleet and an improved um, uh, combined ratio for the, for the insurance company. So again, another win-win in, um, in the fleet channel. So that's all I wanted to say. Um, please do come and see us at our, our booth, um, C111, where we can give you a demo of the, um, of the fleet platform and bring that, uh, bring that to life for you. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Jonathan. So we've got uh, time for one question. We've got about a minute left. So if we could just switch to the Slido slides. We'll take it at the top. Uh, autonomous cars would, pro would uh, potentially change the auto insurance industry dramatically. How do you see that playing out, Jonathan? So, so we're, we're tremendously excited about autonomous vehicles, um, and we actually see a very long parallel. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, we, we think that in 100 years, there will still be people riding bicycles, you know, walking along the pavement, you know, riding their horse in the, in the country lane, whilst at the same time, there'll be all sorts of autonomous vehicles in various states of autonomy, um, from all of the big, the big OEMs. What's going to be absolutely fundamental is to know what's happening in the moment of, of an accident or a collision, because there will still be, still be accidents. So that granularity of, of, of data is going, to be, is going to be really important. 
But I also think that as, as you know, kind of autonomy and connected cars and, and, and ride sharing all start to, um, to have an impact, that, that ability to actually pay per trip is really important. To be able to pay an insurance premium for the specific trip that you make is going to be you know, vital in you know, having you know, the safety and security and peace of mind that you know, people are insured should the worst happen, and this is kind of you know, mandated, by, mandated by governments, but, but done in a, in, a precise, in a precise way to you know, meet the needs of the, the autonomous vehicle and the, and the connected cars. So I think it's really, really important. It's absolutely about you know, driving analytics in, in, in context. Okay, thank you once again, Jonathan. Thanks, Jack. Thank you.